Hey everybody, welcome to this tutorial. This is my very first darkroom tutorial. Before we really get into this, I just want to remind you that if you want to send me your pictures, I will edit them on this channel. The email address is here on the screen now. Feel free to include your Instagram or Twitter so that I can so that I can send people over to your social media to see all of the great works that you guys are doing. Okay, so let's get into it. If you don't know, Darktable, much like Raw Therapy, is a raw photo editor and converter. One great thing about Darktable is it looks and feels very similar to Lightroom. So if you've ever used Adobe's Lightroom, if you come over to Darktable, you're going to feel very at home. Darktable has a lot of extra features that Raw Therapy doesn't have, and maybe we'll cover those in a different tutorial. But just remember, in my opinion, the program that you feel most comfortable with is the best one for you. So there's no better or worse program. These are all just tools, and, and some tools are more powerful in certain areas, and some tools are better for different jobs. So let's go ahead and get started. I've gone ahead and imported what Darktable calls a film roll. To import that, you can come here to the folder or image. I went ahead and put these images in a folder. I clicked on folder and then I went ahead and selected the folder that I had these images already saved to. And then you can see that the folder was even called Introduction to Darktable and there was two images. A previous folder that I opened up had 129 images. And you can see here that my images are designated. I have a DNG image and a JPEG image. Now, just like all raw converters, you can click on the stars down here on the image to go ahead and rate them. You can choose the rating system that you want if you wanna view all your three star or five star images. Uh, also, you can, you can view by the rejected or the accepted. To reject an image, you just click on this little X right here. To unreject it, you click that again. An accepted image is just one that hasn't been rejected. Now, you can select an image. You can see the image that has the lighter gray is one that's selected. And I could add a color to it. Let's say I add a purple or a blue or a purple and blue to this image. And that way, if I want to sort by the colors, I could come down here and sort by color label. And then the ones with certain colors would come first and the ones that haven't been sorted by color would come second. Last but not least, if you come down here to the zoom, you can zoom out or you can zoom in just like that. So that is a quick overview of importing your film rolls into Darktable. So let's go ahead and start editing an image. I'm just gonna double click on this DNG and you can see that my image gets pulled up. You may have a film roll down here at the bottom. If you wanna get rid of that, just click on the arrow and you might have to click on it several times. If you noticed, if I click on the arrow once, the information at the bottom goes away. If I click on the arrow again, then the entire film roll goes away. So I'm gonna go ahead and close both the bottom and the top. And then the other thing that I've done before I started out here is I came down here to the more modules menu. Now you can turn modules on and off by clicking on these right here. So I've gone ahead and turned, there's there's quite a few that were off. I went ahead and turned all of them on. You can see here this color mapping I've turned off. If I click it again, it's turned on. The reason I turned them all on is I wanna see all of the tools that I could possibly use to make this image as great as possible. Another reason that I turn this on is I'm still a little bit new to Darktable. And so it's pretty fun to be able to look at all of the different options available. Okay, so enough of that, let's go ahead and get editing. The first thing that I'm gonna do is come up here to these tabs and I'm gonna come here to the first tab. So if I look at my histogram up here, I can see that I actually am a little bit overexposed and then the blacks in the image need to come up a little bit. One thing you can do here in Darktable is just go ahead and grab the, the side of the histogram that deals with the the black color in the image and then just go ahead and grab and drag that over. Now I don't know if you noticed but when we did that the exposure was turned on and then the clipping threshold and the black level correction were both automatically adjusted to fit what we did here using the histogram. So that's all well and good but I feel like this image needs a little bit more 
So let's go ahead and come up to the basic adjustments and turn on the basic adjustments. And then here in the brightness, let's increase the brightness quite a bit. Maybe, yeah, something like 0.18. And then the contrast, let's also increase that. And we might need to play around here a little bit to get something that we feel works well. If I wanted to, I could just click the auto here. And then let's go ahead and increase the saturation as well. Okay, I think that looks pretty good for us. So now that we've gone ahead and added that in, let's go ahead and close that down, close the basic adjustments, and turn on the crop and rotate. And here with the crop and rotate, let's go ahead and crop our image. We'll do an aspect ratio of, let's go ahead and do an aspect ratio of one to one, and then we can just move that around until we feel like it fits well. And then you can see when I close the crop and rotate, all of a sudden, it appears that the image is cropped, but since this is a raw image, all of that information is still there if we feel like we need to adjust the crop at any time. Okay, next let's move over to the tone group and let's go ahead and just turn on the local contrast tool, up the detail just a little bit. 141 is maybe a little too much, maybe 125. And then let's go ahead and turn on the RGB curve. And the reason I wanna do that is because I really wanna pull out the red and the pinks that are in the flower here, as well as the green in the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and come down and choose RGB independent channels right here. And this allows me to choose the red, the green, and the blue. And then I know that my flower here is in the bottom third of my image. So I, I know if I grab down here, I can affect the saturation, that red or that pink there in the image. Okay, so then we'll move over into the green. If we pull down on the green on the green curve, we add pink or magenta into the image. And then of course, if we pull up on the green curve, we add in green and then blue. I'm gonna go ahead and pull down a little bit to add in some yellow and then pull up to add in some blue. Now, one thing that you'll notice is I've been very, very heavy handed with the colors here. So I'm gonna come back and do my best to kind of bring some of that color back in. One thing to note is if you wanna get rid of a control point, just right click on it and that will delete it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off, turn it on, see, there is some change. I'm not sure that I really like it, but I'm gonna leave it where it's at for now. Then let's go ahead and come over here into the color group. And this is always my favorite is vibrance. Let's turn on the vibrance and then go ahead and increase it to 100 and see what happens. Not too shabby. And let's turn on the color contrast and add in a little bit of magenta and add in a little bit of yellow. And then let's go ahead and come over here to the effects group and let's turn on some vignetting. And we can go ahead and move the vignette over just a little bit. I actually don't mind the scale. We'll make it a little bit smaller and the fall off strength a little bit larger. There we go. So we can turn it on, turn it off. Okay, so we have gone ahead and edited our image. So now it is time to export our image. So I'm gonna come back up here to where it says light table. And then I'm just gonna make sure that my image is selected. Come here to export selected and I can choose where I want that to be exported. And then I'm gonna choose it. Uh, JPEG and I'm gonna make the quality a 90% and then just go ahead and click export. There we go. So as you can see here, this is the exported image. Anyway, I hope that this has been helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you so choose and I will see you next time.